Hey, I'd like to uh, welcome everybody back here. Uh, we're uh, in entrepreneurship in Chapter 7, Section 3 uh, on legal issues and business ownership. Uh, so I did um, upload an assessment for Chapter 7, Section 3. I'd like you to take a look at it, but please listen to the uh, video readings uh, try to take a look at things on the online textbook uh, and uh, we'll talk about some of those topics here today. Uh, chapter 7, Section 3 on Legal Issues and Business Ownership. Some of the goals. Uh, first, we want to recognize how laws promote competition. Uh, we want to describe how to protect intellectual property. Uh, identify consumer laws that affect businesses and describe when and how a business owner should seek legal advice. Some of the key terms and vocabulary from this section of the chapter uh, intellectual property, uh, patents, copyrights, trademarks, and contracts. I'm at the uh, bottom of page 194 with uh, regulations that promote competition. Of course you know, uh, here in the United States, um, in our system of capitalism, we want to promote uh, business competition so that consumers benefit. And uh, so we'll talk a little bit about some of those things here in this section of the chapter. Regulations that promote competition. As an entrepreneur, there are laws that affect almost every aspect of your business. Even the competition that businesses face is regulated by the government. To make sure that competition is fair, the government has enacted various laws to help protect businesses. Bottom of page 194 with antitrust legislation. Beginning in 1890, laws were created that made monopolies in certain industries illegal. A monopoly is called a trust, so these laws were called antitrust laws. Antitrust laws also ban other types of business activities that do not promote competition. You should become familiar with these laws to determine how they affect your business. Page 195, the Sherman Act. This law makes it illegal for competitors to get together and set prices on the products or services that they sell. This means that you and your competitors cannot together decide to keep prices at a certain level. Discussing prices with competitors is illegal. Pete Williams and Jose Palindo used or used to work together at Johnson Fencing, a business that installed residential fences. Each now owns his own fencing company and last month Pete called Jose to see if he would raise his prices by the same amount. Pete was planning to raise his prices. Jose told Pete that he could not because fixing prices with a competitor is against the law. Okay. And um, a number of companies have been um, disciplined on that before. I know, especially in the airline industry. But uh, Clayton Act, the Clayton Act, uh, page 195. This law states that it is illegal for a business to require a customer to buy exclusively from it or to purchase one good in order to be able to purchase another good. A distributor of computers, for example, cannot make customers purchase software when they purchase a computer. Customers must be free to buy only the products or services they want from whom they want. Continuing on 195, the Robinson-Patman Act. This law protects small businesses from unfair pricing practices. It makes it illegal to discriminate by charging different prices to different customers. A manufacturer, for example, may not sell its products at different prices to similar customers in similar situations when the effect of such sales will reduce competition. Differences in price may only be justified based on the differences in quantities purchased or volume discounts. Special distribution or legal requirements in different locations or other economically sound reasons. So, if your business sells to other businesses, you must offer the same terms to all those businesses. This law does not apply to retail stores where certain groups may be targeted by special promotions, 
such as giving discounts to such, uh, let's say, senior citizens. I'm still on page 195, and I want to talk about the Wheeler-Lee Act. Wheeler-Lee Act. This law bans unfair or deceptive actions or practices by businesses that may cause an unfair competitive advantage. False advertising is an example. Under this act, businesses are also required to warn consumers about possible negative features of their products. Drug companies, for example, must let people know of any side effect that they may experience from using a medication. You see that all the time if you go to CVS and you get uh, meds. Uh, at CVS, you, you get um, really a, a long document that states... Um, you know, different side effects, different interactions, and those kinds of things. Uh, I'm on the bottom of page 195, government agencies that protect competition. The Antitrust Division of the Justice Department and the Federal Trade Commission are two government agencies that work to make sure competition remains fair. Other agencies, such as the Federal Aviation Administration and the Food and Drug Administration, oversee business practices in particular industries. Bottom of page 195, the Justice Department. The Justice Department's antitrust division takes legal action against any business it believes has tried to monopolize, turn to page 186, 196, excuse me, and industry. So it also prosecutes businesses that violate antitrust laws, which can lead to large fines and jail sentences. The Federal Trade Commission. The Federal Trade Commission, or the FTC, deals with issues that touch the economic life of every American. The FTC administers most of the laws dealing with fair competition and pursues vigorous and effective law enforcement. Some kinds of activities the FTC monitors include false or misleading advertising, price setting by competitors, price discrimination, and misrepresentation about the quality, composition, or place of origin of a product. It is the only federal agency with both consumer protection and competition jurisdiction in broad sectors of the economy. In addition, the FTC does the following. It advances consumers' interests by sharing its expertise with, expertise with federal and state legislators and U.S. and international government agencies. It develops policy and research tools through hearings, workshops and conferences, and creates practical and plain language educational programs for consumers and businesses in a global marketplace with constantly changing technologies. I'm going to continue here uh, on page 196 and talk about intellectual property. Intellectual property is the original creative work of an artist or inventor and may include things such as songs, novels, artistic designs, and inventions. Such works may be registered for special government protections, including patents, trademarks, trade names, and copyrights that provide business owners with the exclusive use of the intellectual property in the United States and many foreign countries. Registration gives businesses or individuals the exclusive right to profit from what they have created. No one else can use their creations to make money. If you violate another person's patent, copyright, or trademark, you could be sued. I'm at the bottom of page 196 with patents. A patent is the grant of a property right to an inventor to exclude others from making, using, or selling his or her invention. The intent of a patent is to give the developer of a new product time to recover the development costs without having to worry about competition. Patents are issued by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office and last for 20 years. During this period, no business or individual can copy or use the patented invention without the patent's holder's permission. A provisional patent application allows an inventor one year to investigate the feasibility, 
marketability, and potential license interest of an invention before deciding to file a formal patent application. This gives the inventor the right to use the term patent pending and a head start on the other inventors who may file for the same invention. I'm on page 197 with copyrights. A copyright is a form of intellectual property law that protects original works of authorship, including literary, dramatic, musical, and artistic works. Copyright law does not protect facts, ideas, systems, or methods of operation. All books must have a copyright. A copyright lists the publisher of the work in the year in which the work was published. Copyrights remain in effect for 70 years after the death of the author. Jessie Castile is a graphic artist who owns her own business. Jessie's copyrighted designs appear on t-shirts and posters. Last year, she found that a t-shirt manufacturer in another city was illegally using her designs. She sued the manufacturer for violating her copyright. And last on page 197 is trademarks. A trademark is a name, symbol, or specific mark used to identify a business or brand of product. Products that are trademarked are identified by the TM or R symbol, and examples include Band-Aid and Kleenex. You could not invent a new bandage and use the term Band-Aid in the product name, nor could you use the swoosh mark that is the trademark of by Nike and in any product or business promotion that you conduct. Um, you can start taking a look at some of the uh, questions on the um, uh, open-ended assessment for Chapter 7, Section 3, the review questions. I'm going to continue with the readings uh, on page 198 uh, in the next session.